Hey yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy. Oh, gee. Dang. And welcome back to another video. And today, I wanted to spend a little bit of time today to talk to you guys about longboard tail guards. And more specifically, these longboard tail guards. So think of this video kind of like a PSA slash review slash rant about longboard tail guards in general and specifically these cheap ten dollar amazon ones and why i don't really like them as much as i hoped i would now some of you guys might have known that i actually was planning on uploading a skateboard review video today but unfortunately we're gonna have to postpone that because the past day or two it's been super rainy out and i haven't been able to get any good footage for my video so I just figured we'll push it back a little bit because I don't want to bring out something that's not 100% great. So we're going to push it back until Wednesday when hopefully I can get some better footage and shots of the board that we're reviewing. And hopefully it'll be a better video then. So until then, we're going to rant about this a little bit. So I judge a longboard tail guard on three criteria. Number one, durability. How long does the tail guard last before it starts getting destroyed and becomes unusable? Number two, Ability to stay on the board. If the tail guard can't stay on the board and it pops off, I mean, figure it out, you know, what do you think I'm gonna say? And the third criteria is gonna be the feel of the pop. So how does the pop feel with the tail? Does it change how the board feels significantly or is it just a little bit and you don't really notice it that much? So those are the three things that I think determine how good or how bad a tail guard can be. So when I got these cheap Amazon tail guards right here, I was really, really excited actually. Like they were $10, they seemed great. I put them on, tried them out. They seemed like they were gonna be the solution to not having to have hot glue gun tail guards on your longboard. But a little bit after that, a week or two after that, the problem started appearing. Number one, this tail guard is not durable. The thing is falling apart at this point. It's been like a month, month and a half since I gotten this. And it's just really, really frayed. Like, just take a look at it here. There's metal bits coming off of it. The rubber's ripping off. It just does not look the prettiest. One sec, gotta get some shade under this pine tree. Check out that view. Yeah, I was just climbing a hill while I was talking. Because, you know, I don't know actually so yeah the first big problem about this longboard tail guard in particular and pretty much all of the ones on amazon because these are all they all look pretty much exactly the same as this one it's going to be the durability from what i've put it through they just do not hold up this kind of brings me to the second point about this which is it really kind of depends on what you're planning on using your board for and then that will determine what kind of tail guard you need so these tail guards i have one of them on my long board here my loaded tantian and i have one of them on my landy at dinghy board now the dinghy one it's t it's perfectly fine and we'll get into a little bit more about why it's fine later but one of the main reasons is i don't do a lot of tricks on the dinghy and the loaded board i do a lot of tricks so there's a lot of impact and scraping going on in the tail and these things just aren't meant for continuous scraping against the ground. They're meant for a couple bumps here and there, a couple scrapes, nothing big. So that's kind of why I say the use definitely matters because if you don't plan on doing a lot of freestyle tricks or things that involve the tail scraping on the ground, they're probably just gonna work fine to protect your tails. Okay, so the second point is gonna be the pop of the board. How does the pop feel with the tails on? And to be honest, these are actually pretty good. Uh, the pop definitely feels a little bit different, takes a little getting used to. Totally normal, totally doable. It's not a super big difference where you're gonna be like, oh my God, I can't do that. I wouldn't worry about the pop too much. It's, it's pretty good. Also, check out this freaking sweet tree stump I just found on the ground. Doesn't that just look kind of cool? I don't know, I'm gonna sit on it. So yeah guys, don't worry about the pop of these cheap tails. That wouldn't be the thing to deter me from buying them. I think it's perfectly fine. Okay, and the final, the final thing that's probably one of the most important things about the tail guard, the ability to stay on the board that's right i actually had to make this a category because believe it or not wow shocker 
These don't really stay on the board. 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 I don't. I don't know what to say. Honestly, like you would think that if you were gonna make a tail guard, you would at least make it so it stays on the freaking board. Like. <laughs> what? <laughs> <coughs> yeah. This. Oh boy. The tail guard when it's on my dinghy stays on fine i don't i don't know why it just it works how it's supposed to so i'm guessing most boards with a larger tail work fine but for my loaded board these are drop through tails they're small tails and they do not stay on and i've used i literally put five clamps on this thing full pressure just clamping the freak out of this at the same time took it off went skating five minutes into skating it popped off like it just doesn't stay on and that's what it's supposed to do. It's a tail guard. That's kind of my biggest gripe about this whole thing. It doesn't stay on the board. How am I supposed to use it when it falls off the board? Falling off the board, brrr, horrible, trash. At least for drop through boards. If you have cruiser boards, things with long longer tails, normal skateboards, it's probably gonna be okay, but it, don't buy it for a board with skinny tails like the long board, like these long boards. Just, just don't. So yeah. Two big dislikes about this thing would be the durability and the fact that it pops off the board. So let me give you guys some recommendations on other tail guards that I haven't tried but I think might work better. And that would be this one and this one. Check them out because I did a little bit of research and I think that those two are going to be better than these ones. They're going to be more valuable over time. And that's just my quick PSA because I can't really speak much more on the subject because I haven't tried them out, but that would be what I would recommend based off of my knowledge of these ones. So when you go on Amazon and type in, you know, your longboard tail guards, skateboard tail guards, and you see the ones that look like these, don't buy them unless you've heard this video first and you're sure you want to get them. So any types of tricks, they're, they're just going to, they're just not good. They're not going to hold together and they're going to be a waste of money. With that being said, guys, that's all I got from my rant today. <sighs> Glad I got that off my chest because it was really bugging me how I literally wasted kind of $10 on these tails and they don't even work properly on my board. But alas, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. Hopefully next time I get new tail guards, they'll be good. Uh, but that's about all I got for you guys today. So I'm going to sign off and see you guys on Wednesday, hopefully with that board review as long as it's not raining again. And before I leave you... I'm on top of this big hill right now, and I'm going to try to longboard down it on the grass. Let's try it. Oh, wow, that works surprisingly well. Okay. Yeah, anyways, see you guys on Wednesday. Hope you enjoyed the rant. Hit like button, hit subscribe, whatever. Peace out.